you have learnt in class 6 about the natural fibers cotton and jute obtained from plants in this chapter you will learn about other natural fibers wool and silk where do we get these from all of you must be knowing that these animal fibers are obtained mostly from sheep and silk worm these natural products are used to make a variety of fabrics when you touch these fabrics you can feel their texture aren't they different it is because of the difference in texture and weaving that clothes made from these fabrics are worn on different occasions we prefer wearing clothes that suits the season climate comfort and convenience for example during winter we wear woolen clothes that prevent our body's heat from escaping in summer we prefer to wear cotton clothes that are light colored and loose these clothes absorb our sweat and reflect the heat so we feel comfortable likewise silk is preferably worn in winter what is common to all fabrics irrespective of the source of produce they all are made up of fine strands called fiber these fibers are either continuous filaments or long thread like pieces let us learn more about animal fibers wool wool is obtained from the fleece of sheep or goat it is also obtained from the hair of rabbits camels and yak the fleece or hairs that cover the animal's body trap in air and keep the animals warm characteristics of wool 1 wool fibers are complex animal proteins if wool samples are burnt they emit strong smell of burning hair 2 wool is generally creamy white in color 3 wool has scales and it is crimped because of which it has greater bulk than other textiles This property helps it to trap and retain a lot of air. 4. Wool does not wrinkle easily and has natural resistance to dirt. 5. Wool absorbs moisture up to 1/3 its weight without losing its property that is without the feeling of dampness. 6. It is resistant to most organic acids but strong alkalis can damage it. Wool yielding animals. Goat. Angora goat. It finds its origin in Turkey from the Angora region. The fleece obtained from Angora goat is of high quality and has very smooth feel. Kashmiri goat. These are found in higher plateaus of China, Mongolia, and Tibet. The hairy skin of goat has a combination of fine hair and coarse hair. The fine hair is separated and provides the fiber for making wool. Kashmiri goat. Certain goats from Kashmir yield wool of high quality, texture and warmth. The fine soft under hair close to the skin provide wool fibers that are woven into premium pashmina shawls. Camel. Camel wool is prized for its natural beautiful color. The best camel wool is produced from two humped Bactrian camels found in mountains of Siberia and Mongolia. In the South American continent, three important members of the camel family are found in the Andes mountain. They are alpaca, llama and vacuna. The wool obtained from these animals is fine, soft, light and lustrous. Sheep. Bulk of the wool production worldwide comes from sheep. More than 95%. Australia, China, and New Zealand are the leading commercial producers of wool. World's finest wool comes from merino sheep that owes its origin in Spain. In India, the sheep are reared mainly in the hilly regions of Himalayas and the plains of neighboring states, Haryana, Punjab, Rajasthan, and Gujarat. The important breeds of Indian sheep are given in the following table: sheep rearing and breeding. India is predominantly an agricultural country where domestication of cattle plays a very important role in the life of a farmer and affects the economy of the country. The important aspect of sheep domestication is its bringing up or raising. This is called rearing. Rearing of sheep involves proper planning for shelter and taking care of its basics hygiene. It also involves providing the sheep with proper nutrition preventive disease management and selective breeding sheep does not require any special structured shelter they are generally kept in an open yard with a fence around it an enclosure pen of 15 meter into 15 meter is sufficient to keep 40 to 50 sheep sheep feed on green natural grass weeds herbs and farm waste 
In winter, when grazing is out of bounds, sheep are kept indoors and fed on dry fodder and grains. To improve the quality and production of wool of our indigenous sheep, cross-breeding program has been undertaken at a number of research centers in our country. During such trials, indigenous and exotic breeds of sheep are made to cross-breed for the production of superior wool quality and mutton. The different characteristics of the parents chosen for breeding are wool type, flocking instinct, general appearance, resistance to diseases and tolerance of climatic conditions. A superior quality sheep with desirable characteristics will be formed eventually after continuous selection and breeding programs. Such process of selecting parents for obtaining certain traits uniformly in the offspring is called selective breeding. Extraction of wool the wool we come across in day-to-day -day life is the result of labor of a series of process. 1. Shearing Once a sheep have developed thick coat of hair, the process begins with the removal of the hair fleece along with thin skin layer. This is called shearing. Shearing is done annually in summer months so that by the time it is winter, a new coat of hair grows to protect the sheep from cold. It is done manually with a large razor or with an automatic shearing machine. Shearing can be compared to a haircut, so it does not hurt the sheep. The outermost layer of the skin that is sheared is dead tissue. 2. Scouring The sheared skin with hair is washed by simply dipping it in warm water or it may involve complicated industrial process using alkali and a detergent. Scouring removes dust, dirt, dead cells, grease and vegetable matter. Some of the lanolin is left intact. It provides the waterproof property of wool. 3. Sorting This process involves grouping of wool according to its texture into categories of fleas which forms the bulk, pieces, bellies, crutching and locks. It is the quality of fleas that decides the grade of the wool according to its length, texture, color, scale structure and fineness. The other four categories are packed and sold separately. 4. Dyeing The fibers are dyed in various colors according to dictates of fashion and demand. 5. Final processing The fibers are straightened by putting them through rollers which are then stretched and twisted into yarns. These yarns are wound to form balls of wool used for knitting or weaving woolen cloth. Silk Silk called the queen of textiles is a natural protein fiber. Fibron produced from cocoons of many commercial species of silkworms, Bombex mori being the most widespread. Sericulture or silk farming is the rearing of silkworm from the production of raw silk. According to Chinese record, the discovery of silk production occurred in about 2700 BC. Today, China and Japan are the two main producers, together manufacturing more than 50% of the world silk production. India and Italy are also significant silk producers. Characteristics of Silk 1. It is a naturally occurring animal protein fiber. 2. It is as strong as a steel thread of comparable thickness. 3. It has a natural tendency to repel dust. 4. It has a unique natural shine because of the prism effect of its thread. 5. It is a bad conductor of heat, so it is comfortable to be worn in both warm and cold weather. 6. It is sensitive to strong alkalis and acids. The life cycle of silk worm has four distinct stages. 1. Egg clusters. The female silk moth lays 300 to 400 eggs in clusters on mulberry leaves. These eggs are stored in cold for long-term storage. The eggs are warmed to suitable temperature for the larvae to hatch from the eggs on mulberry leaves. 2. Silkworm The larva called the silkworm or caterpillar is a voracious eater, feeding day and night on mulberry leaves. When they are about 35 days old, they are 10,000 times heavier than when they were hatched. The silkworm sheds its mold skin four times. When the worm stops eating, it attaches itself to a piece of straw or branches placed in cultivation trays. They are now ready to spin a silk cocoon. Pupa or cocoon It first weaves a net to hold itself and then swings its head side to side in the form going in figure.
The spinning of cocoon is one continuous filament fiber. It consists of fibroid protein secreted from two openings in salivary glands in the head of these larva and a gum called sericin cementing the two filaments together. Silk solidifies when it comes in contact with air. Once the cocoon is completed, the silkworm goes into a resting phase for two to three weeks. 4. Silk moth. The silkworm then metamorphoses into silk moth that emerges from the cocoon by breaking it, thereby destroying the continuity of the thread of cocoon case. The silk moth secretes a fluid to dissolve the silk and thus escapes from the cocoon with ease. Some of the healthy moth are trapped and kept for breeding. Extraction of silk. The silk is extracted from cocoons that are raised by farmers and delivered to factories. Silkworms are usually killed with heat before it reaches the moth stage. Silk is obtained from undamaged cocoons by brushing the cocoon to find the outside end of the filament. Silk is unwound from the cocoons and the strands are collected through following process. 1. Sorting the cocoons are graded according to color, size, shape and texture. Cocoons may range from white and yellow to grayish. 2. Softening The cocoons are put alternately through hot and cold water immersions so as to soften the glue material sericin that binds the fibron protein. 3. Reeling This is the process of unwinding the silk filament from the cocoon. Filaments are unwound as one continuous thread. One cocoon contains approximately 1,000 yards of silk filament. As the filament of cocoon opens, 3 to 10 strands are usually reeled at a time to produce the desired diameter of the reeled silk. The silk at this stage is called raw silk. A yarn can now be formed by combining several threads of silk. The reel filaments are made into skins and packed into bundles. These are transported to silk miles for weaving the fabric and cloth making. About 70 different varieties of silk moths are of economic importance. Non-mulberry silk production Not all silkworms feed on mulberry leaves such as tassar silk produced in Madhya Pradesh, Orissa and Bihar. Indian tassar wombs feed on trees of terminalia trees. Muga silk Found in the Brahmaputra Valley of India, it feeds on the shrub, Machilius bombesina. Eri silk. Reared in Assam and Orissa, Eri silkworm feed on castor leaves. Health problems of workers in wool and silk industries. Anthrax infection, primarily a disease of cattle like sheep and goats, may affect workers involved with shearing and sorting. This disease is caused due to bacterium anthracis. It occurs as cutaneous skin, pulmonary, lung and intestinal infections. Cutaneous anthrax is the most common type and occurs as primary localized infection of skin that form lesions in hands, arms and neck. 
Common health problems in workers engaged with silk rearing are respiratory problems like asthma and bronchial infections. This happens due to poorly lit and poorly ventilated units and inhalation of vapors from boiling cocoons. Diesel fumes from machines further contribute to breathing problems. Handling of cocoons by tipping it with bare hands into hot water and doing it manually makes the workers' skin raw. They develop blisters that gets peeled off easily, further making them prone to skin infections.